Hey everybody, Mark from Overlook Valley Homestead. This is video number three. And so do you want, so you want to own a cow. <laughs> or something. I don't know what we'll name the video, but it'll be something. Um, so in this third video, we're going to touch on several things, okay? I'm going to kind of combine some of my thoughts and uh, maybe be able to shorten the videos where that they won't have to be as many videos in the series. Uh, you know, and maybe get the same amount of information out uh, to help you. So, uh, we talked about what type of cattle uh, you want to have and, and why do you want to have cows. We talked about the, uh, the acreage and the cattle that you want to have per acre and some rotational grazing. Uh, so, we're, in our next part here, we're going to talk about the fencing. You're gonna have to have fencing around your land, around your property, uh, that is good enough to hold cows. You don't want your cattle getting out, getting in a road, somebody hitting it with a car, and then you got a, a big insurance claim on you or something like that. You don't want your cattle running away because that's your money, that's your investment. Uh, it, fencing is good for keeping the cattle in. Also, good fencing is good for keeping uh, things out that shouldn't be in there. Uh, predators and, uh, you know, might be some bad people or something, but whatever. Uh, we won't go there. But anyways, you want to talk, we want to talk about the fencing that you're going to have to have. Um, and we're going to talk about the cost of that. Uh, fencing is expensive. Uh, there ain't no other way around it. Uh, the more you pay for a fence, the better fence you have, the longer it lasts. Uh, you can get by just putting up something simple. Uh, I actually know some farms that's got a couple strands of hot wire uh, ran around holding their cows in. And it works, you know, whatever works for you, it works. I myself, uh, I prefer to use what's called uh, field fencing. And so, it's the squares, they're about uh, four to six inches or something like that, you know, and they get smaller as they go towards the ground, but um, it's a really good fence, it stretches good, and uh, you know, it, it does a really good job of holding my cows in. Now you can also use bob wire, um, you know, four or five, six strands of bob wire, works really good, spaced out, you know, eight, 10, 12 inches apart at the most, and uh, that work good too, you know. If that's what you prefer to have, then that is probably one of the cheaper ways to go. But let me tell you this before you go off building fences: um, post, the wooden post, the six-inch post uh, that you buy. They are around ten to fifteen dollars per post. Uh, according to where you get them, you may get them cheaper where you live. But around here that's about the cost uh, you can go out in the woods if you have woods and you can cut post uh, cedar makes a good post uh, and there's several other woods that make good posts that'll last for a long time um, so you don't want to cut any corners when you're fancy you want to put in good corner post you want it takes five posts to build a good corner have one right in the corner, one about six feet out on each side from the corner, and then you'll have a post from post to post in the center. Um, you want to concrete those posts in the ground. Uh, you don't want to cut corners on that unless you have a post driver. Now, if you have a post driver, you can drive them in the ground and they will hold. Uh, but it has to be a wood post driver. Um, if you don't concrete them, your fence will never stay tight. Uh, and that becomes a pain as time goes by. And the more you stretch it, the more it pulls the post back out of the ground. So um, I would say the only other option besides concreting them is having a post driver on your tractor or something, or your bobcat, skid steer, whatever. Uh, you can drive posts and they will hold. Uh, it's something about the compression of the ground, you know, it helps hold. So, uh, 
So that's one thing that you want to do. Uh, you want to use a good quality wire, something that you can stretch tight, because the tighter fence is, the better fence is. Uh, and like I said, there's several different uh, fencing wires that you can use. Um, okay, you're gonna need metal post. You want your post to reach up above your fencing. You don't want them to be below your fencing. Um, me, I use probably a six or six and a half foot post. I think they make them up to eight foot tall uh, metal T-post. Uh, and they also make them as short as uh, four and a half foot, I think, which is way too short for fence in my opinion. It's good for a garden fence or something like that. But uh, You gotta remember, you're caging uh, cows inside this anywhere from 800 to uh, 14, 1500 pound cows, if, you know, your bull, uh, my bull weighs 1,355 pounds, so uh, he's a pretty good sized fella. So I want him to stay inside the fence, I don't want to have any problems with him. Uh, uh, so that is T post around here, or somewhere in the neighborhood of about 350 to $4 a piece. Uh, you're gonna have those about every 8, 10, or 12 foot apart. I mean, uh, whatever your preference is on that. Of course, the farther apart that they are, kick ass down here, my legs walk. The farther apart that they are, the less post it takes, but uh, the less strength that your fence has. So, you know, it's kind of something that you gotta weigh up yourself and think about where you want them. Uh, me, personally, I do 10 foot. 10 foot works for me. Uh, and, you know, it's a pretty round number and it's a, you know, 10, 10 11 post and 100 foot, so. Um, if you have a big farm like we do, uh, we have 26 acres here that has fencing all the way around it. It can get very expensive. Uh, so that's something that you need to think about. A lot of time when you have big acreages, somebody else has already spent the money and fenced it, and that's great. Well, the next thing we want to talk about is mending fences. Um, that's something that you do on the daily. You just got to get in the video notes. <laughs> um, you want to ride your fences all the time. And, you know, ride around them on your four-wheeler or your vehicle or walk them or whatever it is that you've got you know and check your fences you want to make sure that they are really stable and that they stay tight uh, you know for the protection of your animals uh, and also like I said for protection of helping keep predators out uh, now they won't keep all predators out but they will sometimes detour some predators so um, you know, it seems to help. But, uh, where I live, you can't do just open grazing. You know, I, I think out west somewhere they still got that where cows can just graze on land. There's no fences, and that's awesome and great, you know. But here in Tennessee, you can't do that. So, um, so the fencing and the mending of fences is something that becomes a daily job if you're a cattle farmer. Uh, you, you check fences, you rebuild fences, you change fences to work for you. You've got to figure out how your farm works. Uh, you know, you may build a fence and think, yeah, that's just like I want. And two months down the road, you're thinking, hey, man, I wish I'd have done it this way because that's not working. That ain't working for me. So there you are. You gotta go tear it down the fence and move a fence and rebuild a fence. Uh, so that it works for you. And that's just part of being a farmer. So that's, uh, I guess what I'm saying is if you want cows, you can't just buy cows and turn them in there and forget about them. Uh, it's a daily exercise to take care of. Uh, I got my notes here because I was gonna go over a couple things in this video, so uh, I'm just trying to make sure that I think about that. Um, the fences is mending the fences. Okay, and, and I, I've already touched on it, but uh, the cost of materials, that's a, that is definitely something that you're gonna have to factor in. 
uh, how many cattle are you having and how much is it going to cost to put a fence around that amount of cattle. Um, so that, that will probably uh, conclude this video. Uh, that's something else to think about. And I'm just trying to do it in small sections so that, so that it's not so overwhelming. And, uh, you know, you can, you can spend a few minutes with me listening to what I got to say and then, then move on and do what you got to do for the day, uh, such as I got to do. But, um, I, I took the time today, uh, to stand out here at the barn and, and do a few videos because, uh, you know, I've been kind of slacking on my part of the video. Sarah's been doing a whole lot. So I, I've been telling her that I need to do this series because uh, so many people were sending me so many messages about cattle. And, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you all, uh, you know, seeing that we have cattle and, and how our cattle do and, uh, and, you know, wanting information from us. That makes us feel good. Uh, uh, and I'm very glad to pass on any information I have about anything we do here on the homestead uh, that will help anybody so uh questions comments leave them below and, and i'll try to get back to you on that be nice uh, like i say these are my opinions on on how i do things around here so uh, all right y'all look out for the next video it should be coming soon uh have a blessed day